Solar is now at a position to be a real contender in replacing a fossil fuel power generation. The mm -hmm. advantage of fossil fuel power generation is that it's not intermittent. Mm -hmm. You turn a knob and you make more or make less. Mm -hmm. And solar, you're dependent on sunlight and another thing. With the coupling of storage, with the coupling of smart cloud communication and, 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 and algorithms, you can turn solar systems into a virtual power plant mm -hmm. that can compete with fossil fuel systems, uh, at least in functionality and availability. Here we are, day one proper of EES Europe, um, part of InterSolar Europe, here in Munich, Germany. And uh, we're joined once again by a familiar face to some of our readers, uh, Leo Handelsman, who's one of the founders of Solar Edge. Um, and yeah, we've seen the Solar Edge 24 hour solar story um, this morning, which obviously energy storage is an integral and important part of that. Right. Um, among, you know, along with some other companies, Solar Edge is now realizing the value of complete solutions and, and offering more to the marketplace rather than just components, obviously. Right. Um, and, you know, I think last time we spoke, so each, each year that we speak, you know, there's more to talk about. There's right. storage prices come down a little bit further. The technology evolves. The technology evolves, the functionality evolves. Just before we came to the show, uh, I hope this is, well, it's on record now, isn't it? So let's talk about it. The launch of Solar Edge's own battery systems. Right. So NMC batteries. NMC so batteries, on, yeah. 1C cells, a, a seamless integration with our overall system in terms of monitoring, communication, installation. A, we see a demand. Our customers are asking us to get a one solution from one vendor. They say we like the Solar Edge inverter and the Solar Edge solution. We, still support other batteries it's not like yes theoretically we are competitors but if someone wants to to work with another battery which we already support and have a relationship with mm -hmm. we will for sure continue to to support it there is no plan to stop a, a, a support even forward going of sales and features and and, uh, and service of course mm -hmm. for batteries from other vendors mm. Uh, but when a customer comes and says, I want one solution for one brand, and I want you to be able to control the overall system performance, mm -hmm. then we need to give him that. And many customers like our overall system and solution. I think what some people might not realize about the, the addition of the battery to your suite is that it's not just another component that right. you're adding to the stuff you sell. Right. You're actually adding something that from every stage is going to affect the everything from the ROI right. to how well the system functions, right. how right. long it lasts. Integration is king, you know, uh, or queen. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, integration is 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 is, is the, the the tighter you can do integration, both technically and feature wise and installation wise, the more you can slice cost out of uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the overall solution. Um, and it can be upfront cost or it can be lifetime cost. The more you can slice cost up, out of a solution, that's the life of our industry. Our industry is, knows that you need to effectively at least cost reduce every year in order to, to survive. Mm -hmm. Because we have mm -hmm. this, uh, the real competition is non-fossil fuel, en is, uh, is fossil fuel energy. So mm -hmm. uh, not only that we provide the brains of the system with our inverters and mm -hmm. energy management platforms, we already own a lithium-ion company, mm -hmm. uh, Cocom, which we spoke about uh, the, the acquisition of Cocom, mm -hmm. and we are in the midst of bling, uh, building a, a gigawatt-scale factory in Korea for, uh, for uh, the Cocom uh, technology. So obviously we're all in, and you can see our storage products here uh, at the show, storage inverters and storage management solutions and uh, uh, commercial and residential batteries uh, from Solar Edge. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're all in. And in terms of the Solar Edge story, say three to four years ago, there was a natural sort of caution that, you know, from, from your point of view in terms of diving into that storage market, and, you know, prices were declining, but they were still fairly high. Right. Um, yeah, where do you see that today in terms of um, Solar Edge's approaches? So, so I've seen that you've got the storage solution out in time for this, or the launches in time for this show. Right. We've seen your approach kind of seem to gradually get towards so it. When we spoke three years ago, I think, or four years ago, the reason for being cautious was not because it wasn't clear where the market is heading, was 
it is very risky for a company that its core business is solar systems mm -hmm. to invest too much R&D, energy, and marketing power in, a, in what was back then a very small segment of the market. Understood, yeah. The segment have grown, the trend is clear. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if you want the solar industry to survive, we need to col combine storage because otherwise solar will not be able to replace fossil fuel in the way I think it should. Mm -hmm. so, so yes, now is the time to go big on uh, storage mm -hmm. and there's enough market for it also. Sure. And I mean, with the addition of things like virtual power plants, which we actually spoke at yep. some length about yeah, yeah. previously, I guess that whole value of what the home system can be becomes closer to, when you aggregate lots of those systems together, it becomes closer to a com conventional power plant, right. I guess, right. in terms of the resource that you have. Yeah, so, so, so putting pricing aside, because pricing varies, and uh, now you have more access to gas and less access to gas, so electricity prices vary, yeah. and storage and solar prices are generally on the decline but there's always a question of how financial some mm. something is and putting that aside uh, 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 we see a near future or virtual reality virtually reality where a, a solar is now at a position to be a real contender in replacing a fossil fuel power generation the advantage of fossil fuel power generation is that it's not intermittent. Mm -hmm. You turn a knob and you make more or make less. Mm -hmm. And solar, you're dependent on sunlight and another thing. With the coupling of storage, with the coupling of smart cloud communication and, 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 and algorithms, you can turn solar systems into a virtual power plant mm -hmm. that can compete with fossil fuel systems, uh, at least in functionality and availability. Mm -hmm. Now comes the big challenge of taking that from a small idea that is probably cannot compete in, in most markets in price with some of the fossil fuel solutions that we have mm -hmm. to making it a cost effective solution. And we see the trend, it's coming. Same like solar was very expensive mm -hmm. 10 years ago and, and now it's much cheaper. Mm -hmm. The more we deploy, the more we develop, the more we cost reduce the components, the future for solar is bright if we embrace all these technologies. So there's a little bit of a competitive dynamic we see now between those who are favoring LFP, lithium ion phosphate, uh, not just in residential, but in other scales, versus people choosing NMC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think some of our readers will know some of the topics, um, some of the issues, some won't. So NMC, generally higher power density, right. does come potentially with the associated risk to thermal management. Right. The LFP doesn't NMC have, has the capability has the of doing of a thermal heavy. runaway, aka fire. Right, sure. So, do you want to just talk us briefly through why that would still be appropriate in terms of right. the so, selection so, and so, so how to manage them, I guess? NMC is a better technology in terms of overall energy density. So, our battery, it's a 10 kilowatt hour battery, it weighs around 110 kilos. If you would want to do that with LFP, would probably 30 to 40 percent heavier and bigger, mm -hmm. uh, or 20 percent heavier and 30 something percent bigger. Mm -hmm. So, and that poses a challenge. It makes the system effectively more expensive. You need a team to mm -hmm. install it. It mm -hmm. makes you need more wall space. You need more uh, energy cost to transport it. Uh, uh, that is the, you the need stronger walls to hold it. You need stronger <laughs> walls yeah, right, or, yeah. or, or or some structure. Mm -hmm. Effectively, it's a more expensive system, um, and that is the immediate downside of LFP. Mm -hmm. The other real thing to understand is that everything in our world grows and improves at scale. So why did solar modules start? When I went into this, the so solar modules were $12 a watt. That might hint of, of how old I am. <laughs> okay. and yeah. And they are now 40 cents a watt, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of scale. Because everybody makes modules and there's mass scale of production and mass evolution, so mm -hmm. price goes down. Mm -hmm. NMC is the battery technology that is enjoying that mass scale. Why? Because NMC is what we have in our phones, mm -hmm. and NMC is what we have in our laptops, mm -hmm. and NMC is what we have in EVs. Mm -hmm. LFP is not relevant for these applications because it would make your phone very heavy and big, it would make your laptop very heavy and it would, and it would make your car non-viable because it won't be able won't to move forward. It won't yeah, move forward. Right. Yeah, yeah. So NMC, if today you say, okay, LFP is 
somewhat bigger, the evolution of the market will drive NMC down faster because mm -hmm. of the volumes. Mm -hmm. And there is a financial incentive to invest in R&D because it's EVs and mobile phones and stationary stores. So NMC is the horse, in my view, to bet on okay. to improve. So, so what are the, the thermal management issues associated with it and how do you conquer those? Right. So, so, so from our analysis and from the industry's analysis, most of the issues related to thermal management are coming from either immature uh, knowledge of how to handle these batteries mm -hmm. or the lack of safety standards. Both are being addressed. Mm -hmm. So usually thermal, manage, thermal runaway happens when you either discharge the battery too much mm -hmm. or charge the battery too, uh, uh, too much. And there are solutions to prevent that. Mm -hmm. Now in early systems, battery management system, which is the component inside the battery that is supposed to prevent that, well, new and immature, and today, both with the existence of safety standards mm -hmm. and a lot of knowledge, we can now apply a lot of safety measures. So in our batteries, we have not one battery management per every cell, but two working in tandem mm -hmm. and as backup to one another. Right, okay. We have additional measures for safety, which are not electronic, because electronics has some form of software uh, to it that can always make mistakes yeah, when course. there is software there is bugs right, right so right. we add to these more physical protection mechanisms so there are thermal fuses mm -hmm. if there is a thermal event the battery disconnects right. physically yes, not yes. No, whatever the software things that needs to happen right, yeah. the battery disconnects mm -hmm. so we layered a lot of different safety measures why did we do that a because we think it's important b in many places and country it is the rule now mm -hmm. and see there's lots of knowledge and innovation EV cars today are tested in a, 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 a car accidents and are tested to great extreme there's still room for improvement mm -hmm. but I think that people are going to understand that if they allow themselves to ride in the highway at 100 kilometers per hour sitting on a big lithium-ion battery mm -hmm. and they allow themselves to take a lithium-ion battery and place it close to their ear it's okay also to place the battery in the garage sure. or, or on yeah. the outer wall of, uh, of their uh, uh, home. Mm. And on top of all these safety measures, batteries now have enclosures, and these enclosures are also designed to withstand some of the worst case scenarios that can happen. Right. Safety concern would go away. Uh, no risk can ever be mitigated. Cars are also dangerous. Not well, if it's cars say, are you know, also you're dangerous. driving around with a tank yeah. of flammable liquid in a regular car. Exactly. Right? So, so, so yeah. not yeah. every risk can be completely mitigated, but it can definitely be mitigated to a very, very acceptable level. Okay. And I don't think LFP is going to get that. Yeah. Five years from now, NMC is going to do the next evolution, and LFP is going to be involved. The other thing we heard with regards to LFP versus NMC last year was supply chain constraints, right? right? So. Some of the storage companies, I'm not going to name names here, but some of them are dependent on supply chains that are also for EVs. Right? NMC, so nickel and uh, magnesium yeah. and cobalt. So and I'm guessing that since you guys now have your own mm -hmm. NMC provider, right. that will take those supply chain bottlenecks or pressures away from Soda Edge, at least, I guess. Or is to that how you plan it? Yes, to some degree, yes, mm. for sure. Uh, um, of course, everyone has a supplier. So we have a supplier, raw material supplier. Part of the issue with NMC sales last year was non-access to cobalt because mm -hmm. cobalt, most, much of the cobalt comes from Congo, which is a conflict uh, zone. So it was hard to get a, a, a conflict-free cobalt, sure. uh, yeah. which, which, which is absolutely must uh, if you want to have a civilized world. Of course. So, so no, by building a factory for sales, you are, we are not out of the woods in all aspects with regards to, to supply because we now need raw material. Mm -hmm. But that is also being taken care of. I remember, again, hinting to my age, I remember a period where you could walk around intersolar and if you had broken cells, PV cells, mm. you could, people would buy them from you at the show on a scale because there was not enough silicon. Right, okay. The yeah, silicon yeah. shortage. Now, what happened is that as the industry grows, people open more and more silicon uh, refineries and silicon uh, mines, mm -hmm. and the problem went away. Mm -hmm. Same will happen with uh, lithium and the other raw materials. There's enough of it mm -hmm. on planet Earth, mm -hmm. just needs to be developed.
-hmm. So as the industry goes, yes. And by the way, part of the technological evolution of, of NMC batteries is using less and less of the rare earth minerals or the semi-rare earth minerals that are needed for batteries. That is also part of, uh, of the R&D. Mm -hmm. Makes the batteries cheaper, easier to manufacture, mm -hmm. safer, mm -hmm. and uh, less uh, susceptible to supply issues. Mm -hmm. It is a natural cycle of any industry as it goes from the early stage to the hockey stick, mm -hmm. where there are supply issues, and, and yes, having our own factory solves part of the problem, right, not all right, of the right. problem, technology evolution in time solves the rest.